Hey, it is our very first live service of 2023, our first time here at 1030. First time not like so rushed like to get everything ready and so, so glad. Uh, I'm pumped for everything that God has done in such a short time, uh, but I'm really excited for what God has in store. I believe we're just getting started and I cannot wait to see all that he has in store for you, me, us as a church. Uh, before we dive into the message, I want to highlight two things. One is, if you have signed up to serve or you would like to serve, we would love to have you on the, on the volunteer team. Uh, I've been transitioning out of overseeing that role as Sheila and Jay have been uh, taking that on. And so if I have dropped the ball at all and uh, you signed up, didn't get on there, uh, thank you for your grace. Let us know. We'd love to get you on. And, uh, and, and so, man, uh, find a place, get plugged in. I also want to tell you, so some people have asked, so what can I do to help and stuff? So after church, we do have to tear down. Our setup is so much easier, uh, but our tear down, we do have to tear down and get the facility back to, to how it is. The Spirit of Joy will have a service tonight, and so if you're interested, we have a tear down team. Uh, but if you're interested in helping, uh, the more hands, the, the easier it is. And so uh, I did want to say, though, uh, because I do not want to lose the relationships uh, we have been, we're a very relational church, and so I don't want anyone to turn into after-service work mode, you know, connect with people, wait, if you got to go, go, uh, we'll, we'll wait a little bit before we tear down, but if you're looking to help, that would be a great way uh, to do that. So who is ready to start our very first sermon series in 2023? And if you're not, we're going to start it anyway, so... <laughs> But man, as I was praying for you and praying for 2023 and praying for us as a church, um, I, I really do believe that this could be your best year ever. Like, I really do believe that. And in fact, I want to say it, and I want you to really listen to it, because I want it to get into your heart. I want you to really understand that this year, 2023, could be your best year ever. And it will be your best year ever if it is your best year with God. Not best year in your, your job, best year, what, you know, like whatever. It, it will be your best year ever if it is your best year with God. So I have a question for you today. If we're going to pray and we're going to believe that this is going to be the best year ever, and it's going to be the best year if it's your best year with God, then here's my question to you. What is your plan? What is your plan to make it the best year ever? Did you know that two teams, two sports teams will gather together and they will have fierce competition to try to win a, a game and they will battle for nine innings, four quarters or two halves and, and to see who will win. And did you know not always the best players on the team win? Not always the team with the best players win. That is why sometimes when people make coaching changes, even though the, the team didn't change at all from the year before, it makes a dramatic difference. They make change. The new coach comes in. You, the coach doesn't play the game. They, they've got to have the players. But the new coach comes in, brings a new strategy, a new game plan, a new way of thinking. And, and if they execute the game plan, not always the team with the best players win, often those with the get, uh, best game plan, and they execute the game plan. And that's why a coach can come in with the same players from the year before, and it's a completely different ball game. So as we move into 2023, what's your plan? What's your plan? And maybe even a better way to say that is, what's your growth plan? What's your plan to grow? I was so excited for having Wednesday nights and being able to do next level. And I, I had on there, we're going to walk through a growth plan and give you some legs to put this on and, you know, and kind of start the new year off. And then we canceled our very first next level night because it snowed. And it kept snowing. And it kept snowing. Anyone, you like, you're just tired of shoveling? Like, it was a lot of snow. Anyone get stuck in the road or a ditch, you know, like we did, and it took about an hour to get us out, you know, like it. And so I'm glad we canceled it, but that, the plan was to do next level Sunday morning, but maybe God had, I guess he had something different. So we're going to do Sunday morning, and then on January 18th, our next next level night, our first one of the year, we'll walk through some of this growth plan. Um, 
But I want you to think of this quote. Everyone ends up somewhere. A few people end up somewhere on purpose. I love that quote. Every single one of us in this room at the end of 2023, we're going to end up somewhere. A few of us are going to put a growth plan in place and we're going to end up somewhere on purpose. Now I know, I know how sometimes people think. Well, I'm just going to trust God. I'm just going to trust the leading of the Holy Spirit and we'll see where we end up. And I want to tell you, I'm going to trust God as well. And I'm going to trust the leading of the Holy Spirit as well. But I'm going to put a plan in place. And something I've wrestled with over the last month, I think sometimes what we do is we say, I'm just going to trust God, I'm going to trust the Holy Spirit, I'm going to follow Him. And wherever He takes me, He takes me. And often we think Holy Spirit spontaneous, and the Holy Spirit is more strategic and planned than He actually is spontaneous. And so sometimes we use the Holy Spirit as a cop-out or a way to be lazy instead of actually putting the work in place a plan. So I want to trust God in the leading of the Holy Spirit. I also want to put a plan in place. Let's look at Psalms chapter 62, verse 11 through 12. Here's what it says. It says, one thing God has spoken, two things I have heard. Power belongs to you, God, and with you, Lord, is unfailing love, and you reward everyone according to what they have done. So where does the power come from? It comes from God. I want us to get this, and I want us to understand this, because the power does not come because we put a plan in place. The power does not come because many of us start the new year off with a season of fasting. The power doesn't come because we have our devotional time in the morning, okay? The power comes from who? Comes from God. What a plan does is it helps me move to where the power is. Let me say it this way. If I'm thirsty and I want to drink a water, I turn the faucet on. I have my cup and I'm ready to drink the water, but it doesn't do any good unless I move my cup to where the water is. And what a plan does is it helps me get myself out of the way, gives me something to go for. I, I want to be able to move to where the power is. The power comes from God, but I want to move to where he is. So as we uh, start 2023 off, um, Many of us maybe will hope, I'm going to hope this is going to be the best year ever. And that's awesome. We all need hope. But hope is not a strategy. So I want to give us um, some ideas and thoughts to put a growth plan in place to help us so that this year can be the best year ever. So as we start the new year off, uh, I spent some time praying for us as a church. And one of the things I love to do is I love to ask God, give me a word for 2023. Give me a word. What are you speaking? What are you saying? What's our word for the year? And I felt like God gave to me one. And before I share it with you, I want to I wanna set it up, okay? So just give me a little bit of time to set it up. I want to share with you some, uh, something that God gave to me when we started this church to help me understand what kind of seasons we are in as a church. And this helped me a lot. Because how many of you know there's, there's different seasons? Right now we are in the winter season. If you went outside in your bathing suit and flip-flops and you put on the sprinkler, hey, that's an awesome season, but you would be really cold and it would be kind of weird if you did it now. It's not the season to go do that. So uh, I felt like God gave this to me as an illustration. So if you've been here, you probably heard it, but a great refresher. If you're new, this will help kind of set up what I feel like the Lord has been, uh, the, the word that he gave to me. So there was a pre-launch season. This was when my wife and I, uh, we, we like felt like the Lord called us to start this church. And at that time, there was no church, there was no name, there was no people, there was no equipment. We, we were just like, hey, we had this vision or this dream to start Connection Point. And the illustration was, I felt like God gave to me was a, a, a woman who gets pregnant. We were pregnated with vision. The, the, we carried the child around for you know, many months and developed, but it wasn't born yet. We started doing some stuff outdoors, and then we found this location and met on Sunday nights and started building a team together. Then in September of 2021, the church was born. The, the child was birthed. And we were here now, and we have started. The, you know, it's like the, the grand opening, and then we were a newborn church. 
Very newborn. I, I, I don't know, like, so uh, I, I love food, and so a lot of illustrations have to do with food. And I got this illustration of, like, a buffet, and I thought of Chinese buffet, and, like, many people would come, Pastor, like, uh, like I, I want to, I like ice cream. I love ice cream. I love sushi. I want to do all this kind of stuff. And I was like, man, we're a newborn church. We're, we're just adding one thing at a time to the buffet table. We're going to add fried rice right now. And then we're going to add lo mein. And then now, now we're working on chicken and broccoli, you know. Like, and it's like we're, we're just newborn. Like, I don't know too many newborns that have a, a job and an apartment and all that kind of stuff. So we're just in that process. And, and then... We've been going for 16 months. The church is born, and we've been adding stuff. And, um, and now we're moving into a new season. And the word that I felt like God gave to me for Connection Point, moving into 2023, is the word transformation. That this is going to be a year of Transformation. The word transformation, if you look it up, actually, it's a thorough or dramatic change in form or appearance. When I felt like the Lord was saying to me, and if you've been around me, you have heard this, I will continually say this, we want people to grow. I don't care who you are, what you've done, where you've been, uh, you should be able to walk into church no matter what you've done, where you've been, what's gone on in life. At the same time, we don't want you to stay there. We want you to grow. I don't want to be the same pastor, the same leader, the same father. I want to grow as all of those things. But transformation is a thorough or dramatic change in form or appearance. Meaning, I don't think that we're just going to grow this year. I, I think that there's going to be a, it's going to look completely different at the end of this year. Me, I'm going to look completely different as a leader, as a pastor. You are going to look completely different. Us as a church, it's going to look completely different. And I need you to understand this, okay? Because if you ever catch yourself saying, oh, I liked how it used to be, tell yourself to be quiet. <laughs> I liked it when we were just a really small group. I liked it when we were pre-launch. You know, all of that. And hey, there's a time and a place for... Uh, things, but just think of this. If you are 30 years old today, and for some of us, we're like, man, I got a lot of years before I hit 30. For some of us, I don't, you're like, I don't even remember what 30 was like, you know? <laughs> but I don't know too many 30 year olds that have a diaper that mommy or daddy is feeding them with a spoon. It was a season, but we have to grow, and so therefore it has to change. And I believe that this is going to be a year of transformation. I believe the world needs some transformation. I need, uh, our state needs some transformation. The city needs some transformation, needs some God in the place. But the main thought for today's message is this. I want to see the world change. I want to see our state change. I want to see the city change. But here's the main thought. Transformation starts with me. Transformation starts with me. And we're going to look at Joshua chapter 5. Verse 13 through 15. Joshua chapter 5, verse 13 through 15. I'll read these three verses and then we'll dive into it. So it says, Now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down into the ground in reverence and asked him, What message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. So Moses was the leader. Now Joshua is the leader. And he's kind of at a place where he's going for a walk. And he's trying to figure out what to do. You ever have those seasons in life? You're at a crossroads. You're trying to figure out. He, he's coming up to Jericho and like, what am I going to do? Jericho, the walls were so big, they could do races on them. The, the walls were so thick. Like it, it's like, how is this even going to be possible? And he's going for a walk. In verse 13, it says, now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. He looked up. That's one thing I just really felt like for some of us, uh, 
uh, like in our situations, maybe you're going through some stuff and it's so easy to keep our eyes focused on every problem and situation and what we're going through. And often the Bible talks about look up. See from a different perspective. See from a God perspective. See maybe there, what he's doing and his faithfulness of all the times he has been faithful. And so maybe for some of us, look up. And Joshua looked up, but what did he see? He saw in front of him a man standing, a drawn sword in his hand. And Joshua went up and asked him, are you for us or for our enemies? I want you to think about this. You're going for a walk, you're trying to figure out, and you come across someone who has a sword. And he's got it drawn, and he asks a pretty important question. Are you here to kill me, or are we here to fight together? I, I kind of want to know that because I need to know if this is a moment we fight to our death, or are we fighting on the same side? And what it says is, verse 14, neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked, what message does my Lord have for his servant? Are, are you here to fight with me or are you here to fight against me? And he says, neither. As commander of the army of the Lord. Now many Bible theologians actually believe this is Jesus because he's the commander of the army of the Lord. And what I wanted to kind of challenge us in our thinking, uh, challenge us personally in, in our own lives, is that the commander of the army of the Lord shows up, and what does he do? He falls face down to the ground in reverence and asks him, what message does the Lord have for his servant? He, he shows reverence in his posture, and he says, what do you, as the commander, you are the commander, what do you want to say to me? And I just want to ask you, when the Lord shows up, what is your posture? When the Lord shows up in worship, what is the posture of your heart? Is it, hey, I, here I am, I, I posture my heart in humility and submission and surrender to you, and what does my king want to say to me? When uh, the Holy Spirit shows up in a message, and uh, the pastor or a guest speaker or someone is preaching and the Lord speaks to you, what is the posture of your heart? And is it as the commander of the army of the Lord, what do you want to say to your servant? And I bet most of us would say, oh yeah, I, I would show reverence to the Lord. And, and, and I, saying that is way different than actually doing it. Because when the presence of the Lord shows up, what's your response? If the Lord says, hey, I want you to forgive someone who has hurt you, I don't want to do that. Then the posture is not, commander of the Lord, what do you want to say? And I'll go do it. It's not, I am going to be the commander. <laughs> if the Lord says, hey, go, like, there's a gossip train going along. And you know, like, you're like, he's like, don't jump on that gossip train. And you're like, oh, but it's so fun. <laughs> And you jump on the train and you watch where it takes you. The Lord says to share your faith. Oh, but man, it's, it'd be so uncomfortable. It'd be so awkward. Like If the Lord says to give and you're like, I don't want to give. Like, what's the posture? I don't know about you, but I never want to go into battle on my own. And when the Lord shows up. You're out there in a walk trying to figure out how to take down Jericho. And the Lord shows up, going to give you some instructions on how to take down Jericho. I want to make sure my heart is posture that, God, this is your battle. I hope you individually and us as a church continually find ourselves in bowing down in reverence to the Lord and asking him, what does the commander want to say to his servant? So something I wrestled with in December... And uh, I'll kind of go off on a little tangent and come back. Uh, but uh, man, I, I just, I believe God calls a person to an assignment. And then he brings people to be along, like to be an extension of that vision. So I, I, like God has called my wife and I to pastor Connection Point. And then he brings people to be alongside of that vision or mission. 
And one thing I highly underestimated when we started this church is how many people will come from other spots and they want to tell me the new vision. And they want me to get on board with their vision and not actually come under alignment to the house and where we're going. And uh, I, I would say, like, you know, I'm writing some stuff down and praying and it's like vision hijackers. They want to hijack the vision and make it their vision. And I've had to wrestle through that and all that kind of stuff. So why do I say that? Because I was going through this message and that thought came to my mind of something as the pastor leader of the church came up and then the Lord flipped it and made it about me. It was like, I wonder how many times you've been a vision hijacker to what I wanted to do. I was like, oh, (laughs) that I'm telling God the plan instead of saying, God, what's the plan? I want to join. I want to come into alignment to what you are doing. Verse 15 says this. It says, the commander of the Lord's army replied, take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. This is not even in my notes, but there's, I, I just noticed something. And Joshua did so. Take off my sandals. Okay. I don't, I don't know, like, why? <laughs> like, I really need to take off my sandals? It's holy? Like, like, do I need to take off my shoes? It doesn't make any sense. My wife and I, when we moved here from Texas to Minnesota, it, it wasn't a custom to take off our shoes in Texas. Like, we don't have snow and all. So people just wear their shoes in houses. And the first house I went out there, hey, you know, can you take your shoes off? And I'm like, why? Didn't make any sense to me. Now I've lived in Minnesota. And I'm like, man, there's a lot of mud on my shoe. Yeah, you want me to take my shoes off? That makes sense. Hey, you're coming to my house. Can you take your shoes off? You know, I get it. He just did so. But the commander of the army of the Lord says, take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy. One thought I would like you to think of is sandals were man-made. The ground where he's standing was made by God. And the place is holy because his presence is there. And I wonder how many times God says, hey, take off the way you're thinking. Take off your plan. Take off your idea, because the place where you're standing is holy, and I am here. And and put your agenda aside to find out my agenda, because when you're about to go take down Jericho with some pretty thick walls, and it's going like, you don't even know, like, trust me, I got this. I got it. Trust me. It's my fight. It's not your fight. It's my fight with your daughter. It's my fight with your son. It's my fight with your husband. It's my fight with your wife. It's my fight with your finances. Trust me. Take off your thinking, your plan, your idea. Find out what I'm saying and put that together. So when we say a growth plan, I'm not saying you just write up and what you want to do. Find out what the Lord is speaking so that you can be challenged to move under that faucet. And be where his power is. I believe God wants to use you. I believe God wants to use me. I believe God wants to use us because there's some pretty big walls that need to come down. Pretty big walls. And I want to come into alignment to what he wants. Because I believe a group of people like this can, there can be a lot of transformation that happens. In fact, I love what Margaret Mead said. She said this, Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. And I'm reminded, man, the devil wants to steal, he wants to kill, and he wants to destroy. He wants to steal, he wants to kill, and he wants to destroy. That's his, that's his goal, that's his aim, that's what he's trying to do. And there's a lot of people he is stealing, he's killing, and he's destroying. There's some pretty big walls that need to come down. And when I'm going for a walk and you're going for a walk, you might come up to these walls and it seems a daunting task. How is this even possible? How is this person ever going to give their life to Jesus? How is this marriage ever going to be restored? How is this daughter or son ever going to find the Lord? How how are these finances ever going to change? But I never want you or me to, to lose sight or underestimate the God factor. It's not my job to take down Jericho. My job to come into alignment with him and watch what he will do. 
So instead of focusing on transforming the world, instead of focusing on transforming our state or our city, the main thought for today is transformation starts with me. I want to find out what he's speaking to me. So I'm going to say some stuff, and I hope that it challenges you. My intention, my goal is not to push you down. (laughs) It is to inspire you to get up, okay? But I'm going to say some stuff, and I hope that you hear the heart behind it. Because I want to say, husbands, if you want to have a better year in 2023, and you want it to be your best year ever, then where does transformation start? It starts with you. You make it your best year with God. Don't try to change her. Don't try to change the situation or circumstance. You focus on you. Find out what God's saying. Put a growth plan in place. And you move under to where his faucet is. And I believe if you do that, you'll see a change. Wives, you want to have the best year in marriage ever? Don't try to change him. Transformation starts with you. You focus. Make it your best year with God. Parents, I don't know about you, but man, parenting in 2023 is a little bit scary. It's scary. And am I going to get it right? And I've learned this. I'm not always. I'm going to mess some things up. And that's so, I'm so thankful for God's grace. And, and so instead of me trying to change them, I want them to see the transformation that happens in me. I want God to be first in my life and in my heart. I, I want to see my finances be different. Well, then transformation starts with you. You do it God's way. You trust his path and his plan. You want prayer life? Then, hey, transformation starts with me. Don't just talk about the importance of prayer, but put a plan in place to help you, as Proverbs talks about discipline and wisdom, and so that you can increase in your prayer life. Why do I find a growth plan so important? It's because without one, I'll watch the water running on that faucet and never move. But I want to put a plan in place. To help and have people come alongside so that 2023 can be the best year ever. And it will be if it is your best year with God. I'm going to ask the worship team if you guys want to make your way up to the front. I believe the faucet is on. But remember, the power isn't in fasting. It's not in Bible reading. It's not in our, our prayer. The power comes from God. So I want to put a plan in place with these disciplines, whether it is Bible reading, prayer, fasting, other things that help move me to where the power is. I don't know about you, but sometimes we can get off track and off course, and we can lose being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And so the water's running. Ah, I've seen that water. I've, I've drank that water. I've had that cup. And, and I don't even realize how distant I am from where he really is. And often we ask God to move to where I am. But I want to put a plan in place so I can come to where the power is. I'm going to give you some very practical things. And that is personal, relational, and calling. And uh, you can go back and listen to this message and write this stuff down if you want. We'll talk about it at our next level, but personal. What is your plan physically, mental, emotional, spiritual, and financial? Personal. What's your plan? Because I bet if you were honest with yourselves and you graded yourself one through five in all those areas, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial, not all of us would put five at all five of those. So what is one of those that need a better plan than you've had? Relational. For me, I have on there husband and dad. Husband and dad. I didn't follow my plan when I got up here and told my wife, like, she doesn't listen, blah, blah, blah. So so I work on some stuff. But a husband and a dad. Why do I want to have a plan? I don't know about you, but it's so easy to be so busy and just coexist in the same house and never grow closer, never spend time with God together. It's so easy to do. And so then you're so busy and your kids now graduate and you're like, who are you? 
I forgot who you were because we didn't really spend any time connecting. As a dad, I want to put a plan in place that, that um, I, I want to do the best that I can to help them grow in their walk with God. So I want to have some moments where it's like, because hey, like, I can get busy, and then uh, we're looking at 2024, and I never had like one-on-one -on -one time. I never challenged them. I never listened to what they're going through. Calling. Calling for me, you, like Job-wise, what is, what is something maybe God is placing in your heart for the future? And so you, you got to grow in some areas, you know, like, so for me, I wrote down pastor and leader. It's two areas for me, my calling, what God's called me to, and I want to grow in. Because, and, and those two things, uh, they're, they're separate. They're together, but they're separate. Because I know some people that are incredible pastors. They're awesome pastors. But man, they stink as leaders. And the church doesn't go anywhere. But then they're great pastors. And then I know some people, they're great leaders, so the church grows. But man, they're horrible pastors. And I wrote down, like, hey, pastor, leader. These are two areas I want to push myself, myself to grow. So here's kind of how we're going to wrap up today. Um, we're going to go into a time of worship. I'm so excited to have just a little bit more time in our service, not feel so rushed. And uh, we want to have time always to just respond to the Holy Spirit and what he is speaking. And so we're not going to have like two and a half hour long services, just so you know. I know, like, uh, like I said, I like food. I get hungry. I, I know that's when I know the Holy Spirit's done. He's like, you're hungry. No, I'm just kidding. But anyways, uh, I want you to stand on your feet. And I just want you to spend a few minutes just worshiping the Lord, just asking him, what do you, what, what's the commander want to say to your servant? I want you to listen to him. I don't know, like, that's what I love about God is that he could speak something and he will speak something different to all of us because we're at different places. And so I'm not trying to, to make you do something. All I want you to do is ask the Lord, what do you want to speak? And it, it might be something huge. It might be something for you. The reason the marriage is struggling is because you have not yet let the wall down that you have built up. And he's saying, man, let it, let me in. Let me back in. Maybe the reason the finances are struggling is because you have not yet done it God's way. <laughs> Maybe the reason that you have not been able to move forward is because he's been asking you for 18 months to forgive so-and-so and you keep wanting them to tell you something new and he keeps telling you the same thing. And it could be something so simple. Hey, I want you to just work on this. I, hey, I want you to go home and put a plan in place. I, I don't know. It's not my job to tell you. But I just want you to posture your heart in a place that is humility, humbling. God, here I am. I, I, I humble myself before you. And what is the commander, my commander, my king, my Lord, want to say to his servant? And so God, as we just go into the next few minutes of worship, let our ears be open, let our heart be soft, and that you would speak so crystal clear. Lord, I come against anything that would try to be a distraction in our mind or in our heart to get off of the, the listening to you. And I pray in the next few moments, let us be in tune with you. Let the radio station of our heart change the dial so it lines up exactly to your frequency so we can hear your voice. And so, Lord, I pray you speak. Your servants are listening. And so, God, we humbly humble ourselves before you and we want to hear your voice so we worship you